Curtis Sliwa is on the line with us, uh, the CEO and co-founder of the Guardian Angels, host of the brilliant Curtis Sliwa Show on New York's AM 970. The answer is website curtissliwa.com. Uh, a man I'm proud to call a friend, I know. Hey, Curtis, welcome to the program. I oh, appreciate that. Thanks for uh, chewing my shorts and pulling my chain right before the beginning of the new year. <laughs> it's my job, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, Curtis, this New York paper uh, in, in your state, a newspaper in New York State, and it was owned by Gannett, which owns basically every newspaper in the world, or at least in the United States, uh, published a database of gun owners in a couple of counties, in two New York counties, Westchester and Rockland counties. And I'm looking at this thinking two things. One, um, I have three brothers. One of them has several registered firearms, and and I'm thinking, you know, the, the, it's kind of an invasion of his privacy if he were to be in one of those counties. Uh, and on the other hand, I'm thinking, I'm the parent of three kids, and more children are killed by visiting a neighbor's home, finding a loaded weapon, and accidentally killing themselves or killing another kid with it than are killed in all the homicidal maniac attacks in the United States. I mean, more, more kids are killed that way every year than are killed by homicidal maniac architects in a decade. And so I'm thinking, if I could look at a database of all the homes in the neighborhood that I lived in when my kids were 7, 8, 9, 10 years old, particularly my son, who was very inquisitive, and I could see the, the neighbors who had guns and who had kids, I would make sure that my kids did not visit those houses. What's wrong with my logic? Oh, nothing at all. You should have a right to do that. I don't have a problem with a registry. Uh, I know a lot of people think it should be hush, hush, mush, mush, particularly in New York, where you have to register handguns. But whether if, if it's a rifle or a shotgun or an assault weapon, you don't. Even our governor, Andrew Cuomo, acknowledges he owns a shotgun. Mm -hmm. he, his primary residence is in that very Westchester County in a town called Mount Kisco. And you'll notice you could click all the dots that are on the map there that point out the handgun owners that are registered. He's not one of them. But... The problem is, is if you're going to do it just for handguns, you should do it for everything or not do it for anything because it's very confusing to say, you have a handgun, you got to register it, it's got to be licensed, but if you have a rifle, a shotgun, or an assault weapon, you don't. And I would say, no, 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 no. It's either register them all or don't register any of them. I agree with you. I, didn't, I never thought I'd say that, but I, <laughs> I agree with you. And, 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 and my take on it is... If we're registering cars and we're registering drivers and drivers have to have insurance and they have to demonstrate competence before they can use a car and thus get a driver's license, and the reason, the only reason we do that is because a car is a 5,000-pound piece of metal that can fly down the highway at 70 miles an hour and take out people, then why wouldn't we do that for the devices that are manufactured for the sole purpose of killing people? Well, as you know, guns are exempted because... In America, take my wife or take my husband, take my kids, take my dog, take my boat, take my car, take my house, take everything. Just leave me with my guns. You know, that's the mentality. It's going to continue to exist that way as we're partitioned uh, uh, based, based on whether we live in rural areas, suburban areas, or urban areas, the way we view guns. I think we're waking maybe, up. You know, if you look at the numbers, a, Curtis. As a result of all these shootings of late. Some sanity will prevail. I mean, we were told, I was shocked, uh, my mayor in New York, Michael Bloomberg, first mentioned that we didn't have a director of the ATF for six years, and the president said the same thing. And I said, oh, of course not, because everybody who wants guns doesn't want them to have to be registered or traced, and that's wrong. Uh, there's right. nothing wrong with having a gun. I choose not to have one. I've been shot up in the past. So actually, in New York, which uh, it's very difficult to qualify for a carry permit, a concealed permit, I was told by the New York City Police Department that I could qualify based on the kind of uh, damage that I suffered at the hands of the Gambino crime family, but I chose not to carry, uh, whereas other people choose to carry, and if there's a rationale behind it, I support it. Now, when you started the, the, the Guardian Angels uh, back in the day, my recollection is that one of the things that, that really differentiated you guys from that, uh, what was it, Bernard Getz uh, character, not, not even to draw an analogy, because, you know, he, he was a crazy man, but for a short while there, he was kind of glorified in the media as the vigilante justice guy, um, but that he was armed, 
You guys, my recollection is that the Guardian Angels, you were proud of the fact that you were unarmed. Am I, am I remembering, remembering right, Curtis? That, that is correct, and it still remains that way both here and around the world where we have Guardian Angel chapters. You cannot carry any weapons whatsoever. Now, maybe in your own personal life, you're registered to carry a firearm, but you can't do it in colors, and you certainly can't do it while you're on duty. Uh, we travel without weapons because we feel, as peacemakers, as people who have to do interventions, we're not going to be able to do much peacemaking or inter intervening in troubled situations if we have guns ourselves. Whereas we understand the trained professional police officers, they need weapons, the military needs weapons. Uh, if you have weapons for sport uh, or you want to go out and hunt, that's obviously something you have a right to do in the United States. Yeah, and I agree. I've got to tell you, uh, I feel generally, in generally, but in general, weapons will end up causing more problems than they solve. But then again, I disagree with a lot of Americans on that. So uh, uh, you and I both, although increasingly I think a lot of Americans are agreeing with our perspective, and, and I find it interesting, you you as a conservative, me as a liberal, here we are agreeing on this. Um, the the uh, There is an argument being made that the, the biggest violation that this newspaper did in publishing the list of handgun owners was by saying to people, uh, you can either A, they use two arguments, A, don't rob these houses, rob their neighbors because they're not, you know, there's not an owner in there with a gun. That's a pretty weak argument because, you know, somebody gets a drop on you and you've got your gun in your gun cabinet locked up. It ain't going to do you any good. Um, and then others are saying uh, this is an invitation to rob the houses of the people who have guns of their guns. And I would say, you know, a gun is like, you know, 300 to 1,000 bucks. Any house, any middle-class house, upper-middle-class house, the houses that typically would have a weapon in them, uh, you know, for protection that would be able to afford a weapon, they're going to have jewelry, they're going to have other things that are of equal or much greater value than the gun. Um, the argument that publishing a gun list, a uh, list of gun owners, is a is a rob here list, in my mind, just strikes me as ludicrous. Your thoughts? Right. Well, I understand why the Journal News would do it. They're trying to make a point, but actually a reverse scenario can take place, just like we thought in the aftermath of Newtown, Connecticut, in this most recent uh, shooting in Rochester. People would reflect about buying guns. Well, Americans have fueled the economy by buying more guns than ever before and assault weapons. But we not more Americans. Well, retail or wholesale before Christmas. Yeah, but but, but here's the interesting sales, thing, Curtis. Sales, it's ammunition sales have gone through the roof. Yeah, but 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 it's not more Americans. What you find is that you know fewer than half of Americans, or roughly half of Americans, have a gun. But the percentage of people who have more than one gun is is uh, really small. I don't have it in front of me, but it's like under 10%. And the percentage of Americans who have more than five guns is really, really smaller than that, but they have a lot of guns. So basically what we have is a small number of people who have very large armories, and they're the ones who appear to be buying lots of guns and ammo. So, yeah, but Tom, with the publishing of people's names and addresses, the people who don't have weapons are suddenly going to say, gee... Are we going to be victimized? And they're suddenly going to have a conversation about possibly going out and getting a legal handgun. So yeah. the reverse can actually happen from that kind of public uh, publication of right. names and addresses. So beware of the law of unintended consequences. Curtis Sliwa, CurtisSliwa.com, the website. Thanks, Curtis.